welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you, friend? So glad to be with you today. I hope you feel the same way. Welcome. If you haven't seen the program, we welcome you. And uh, we have lots of really regular faithful viewers, and we couldn't do it without you. That's, that's the fact. So thank you all, and I think that you're going to find this program riveting today. I'm so thankful to have my guest, Detective James Wisher, who wrote The Boy Who Never Cried Wolf. And uh, this book, I could not lay it down. He is a detective in charge of the Department of uh, Crimes Against Children in Manatee County, Florida. And no one could be better qualified for that position because he was really tortured molested, raped at the hands of a predator for about 10 years. And it also shows what the healing grace of the Lord Jesus can do. I don't want you to miss meeting this gentleman. And I'm going to join Stephanie for a real simple key lime pie. I thought this would be so good, but I'm not having good feelings about it right now. So before I join her and walk into what I feel might be a disaster. Let me remind you, friend, we are viewer supported. As all television is, um, you either buy a product or something, but it is the viewing audience supporting us. And uh, we just, today we're just cutting out that middleman. You just uh, support us directly. And oh, how we appreciate it. So if you um, like to use a credit card or debit card, for this kind of giving, it's 1-800-229-0059. Or our address is Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Every gift, large, small, is so, so appreciated. I just want you to know that. All right, here we go. I'm kind of <laughs> nervous about this one. I just want to preface this by saying I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I know I have to say that is true. Mm -hmm. And I was bragging to you, remember? We've got this recipe that is so simple. You put it in the freezer and it's light. It's kind of rich, but it's light and it's going on and on about it. And I think we can I determine it's gonna be a problem. I think we it just went in the refrigerator a little too early. I think it'll be fine once it freezes. Well, we'll see. Now, uh, the one thing I wanted to learn is, is the key lime, which is this and real lime juice, and I wanted to see how if it tasted differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go ahead and put that okay. in. Okay, this is a can of sweetened condensed milk. Condensed milk. Um, I couldn't tell a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. So I went online, because as they say, everything on the internet is Just true. Just Google it. Yep. Um, and it said that the key lime is a much smaller lime, and it's a little milder, mm -hmm. and a little sweeter. Well, there's nothing sweet about a lime or a lemon, but yeah, no. anyway, it's all relative, I guess, so. So anyway, which one do you want to use for this pie? Do you want to use the lime juice or do you want to use the Let's do key? this one because okay. we did the other one with that and and we know it's going to be a disaster so maybe we can have a little faith <laughs> on this one. And this is uh, a half a cup of lime. Yeah, juice. or you could buy your limes and just squeeze them if sure. you want. But that's not something we wanted to do at this stage. And we have some lime zest Peel. that you mm -hmm. zested up. Oh, when we zested that, Oh, she got so, so excited. It smells so good and so It doesn't take fresh. a whole lot to really make her happy. Yeah, she just, no. oh, she got so excited. <laughs> this is basically it, and then a cup of whipped cream. And what you took whipping cream earlier, and you just whipped it on up, so you can just stick you that want, in here. Sure. Wanna, okay. Um, and we whipped it ahead of time because it's so noisy, but it's mm -hmm. not that yucky, cool whip stuff. And you should have seen her posture. <laughs> <laughs> she was all. Yeah, because it splatters, so I backed <laughs> off from it. <laughs> uh, we look like cool cooks. Get we? all that. Come on that, now. Okay. Well, we need a little get a little help. Mm-hmm. You don't want to waste. No, 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 no. We both admitted that we love whipped cream, right? Oh yes. But you have no idea the high hopes I had for this. It's gonna be good, I'm telling you. But unless frozen, the Lord has created a miracle <laughs> in that freezer. And then we have a ready-made, um, yeah. already. It's a graham cracker crust. Which you it? can also make yourself if you want to, but, but why? Well, you don't have to, so. Uh, that kind of thing, I wonder why. Yeah. Why do you make it? 
Just pour it right in. And then you freeze that, which we did overnight. I took it out. I thought the recipe said to take it out a little bit. Yeah. And um, it thawed a lot. But at that point, you're supposed to put on the top layer of whipped cream. So this here we go. so good. Mm-hmm. So we'll put this. And like I said, if it, if it does work out, um, it, it could be the easiest. And what I was thinking at the end of my meal, mm -hmm. I like something really light, uh, not heavy, just a yeah, very- This would be light and refreshing. Very, very small slice of this mm -hmm. is all you need. Do you want to slice it? No. And I'll taste it. Oh, yeah, it. sure. <laughs> She's not as messy as I am. Well, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any slicing. <laughs> Do you want here? Here, taste it right here. <laughs> well, down there it's a little thicker. Well, sorry, you don't want this, do you? Mm. It'll freeze up, I promise you. Oh, my. Oh, wait a minute. We're supposed to yep, jazz this. it up a little bit. Yep, there you go. Make oh, and that's pretty. pretty. So you, you really believe... I think once this goes back in the freezer, it needs to stay in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just bring it out right before you're getting mm -hmm. ready to serve it. Okay. Yep, that's what I think. I think it'll be good. Well, then if you'll stick that back in, we'll mm -hmm. probably make the crew very happy. Yes. Maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And do you think anybody out there wants this recipe? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the information is coming up on your screen. You can't say we're not totally honest, so... Um, if you want it, we'll be glad to send it to you. But more importantly, please stay tuned to hear my guest. It's such an important program. Very important, by the way. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Okay, I'm glad to welcome Detective James Wisher. And he is the head of uh, the Department of Crimes Against Children in Manatee County, Florida, the sheriff's uh, office. And I, I just am so glad to meet you. I, I read your book, couldn't, couldn't lay it down at all. And let me tell the audience that you can go to Amazon.com, get this. There's a lot of other outlets that have it. It's called The Boy Who Never Cried Wolf. And it's, it's really a book that... Uh, you, you really should read. It's not wonderful to go through life ignorant, is it? And yeah. and this is an ugly thing, but you got to put the light on it. Sure do. Which sure do. is what has happened in recent years with the Catholic Church situation with yeah. some uh, predatory type priests and also uh, Penn State. Just uh, yes. by the way, uh, with your background, which we'll get into a little more, what do you think reading about Penn State and all these things were going on because you could so closely identify. Well, there's no doubt the man did it. Oh, uh, yeah. People saw him doing it. Um, what hurt me the most was that uh, people allowed it to continue. Mm -hmm. That's what really troubles me, even today uh, in my line of work. Um, there's no shortage of family members that seem to circle the wagons around the bad guy and protect him from the police. And so that's, that's oh, troubling. Yeah, and, and money. Yeah. You know, the football. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just beyond comprehension for people with any character. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your story. You, um, you're a child of divorce uh, at the age of four, and I doubt if you're just really real conscious of what's going on there, the dynamics of it. Or I was, was kind of young. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that there was uh, just suddenly some drama between my mother and father. My dad was never there in the picture much anyway. Um, but he came to the farm, Grandpa's farm, and they were just arguing, a lot of people arguing that day, and he came to me and said goodbye. And uh, that was it for 10 years. I didn't see him after that. You did have loving grandparents, so let's hear it for the grandparents. Oh, I've got a whole ton of grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> On both sides, too. They really loved us. Uh, do you think maybe in some ways that was, a, that was a lifeline that, although you couldn't be with them much, you knew there was someone out there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side um, reared me in uh, biblical truth from a very early age. So that was a foundation that I stood on forever. And my grandparents on my dad's side just doted on us. So, What a testimony. 
get that word of God and yeah, you right. were very little. Oh yeah. Very little. So your mother married the devil is in my estimation, evil and uh, how long, see we blended some fa family here, mm -hmm. right. Uh, did he begin immediately to abuse, molest, rape, beat? Yes, within the first couple of weeks being in his house. Um, the physical abuse began right away and then sexually just weeks into living in his house, it sure did. And uh, even as you got older, there were beatings with belts and... Yes, uh, and a and very sadistic man. Um, he seemed to take pleasure in harming children. Um, and I could go on and on with the physical end of it. That was just horrific. And um, there's a real predictable pattern, is there not? As he groomed you and scared you mm -hmm. and threatened you, yeah. and that really is the M.O. of all predators, right? Yeah, there's some sort of uh, threat or coercion that usually goes along with it. Um, the younger the children are, it's, it's real easy to threaten, and they believe what the big people say, and the threats were, uh, were just terrible, and I believe that he would carry them through. Now, I'm an adult now, he would not have carried them through. He was a coward. But as a four-year-old, you think, well... And he says he's going to kill your mother. You believe oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And, uh, but everything I've learned uh, about these kind of things over the years, it's always intimidation, this, yes. uh, you know, on steroids. Yeah. Kind and of. it worked for a long time. It sure did. Yeah. How long did it go on? About a decade. Um, into my early teen years, uh, we reconnected with my dad. And you just start to get the courage as you're starting to grow up to say enough. I'm going to do something. Nobody else is going to help me. I'm going to have to do something about this. And, and this man, um, from outward appearances, was some kind of a respectable citizen, right? You would think so. Um, college educated, suit and tie type of guy, uh, small business owner. Um, in my early years, he was even running for public office, um, endeared to the community. Uh, did he make one move to a very small town in the south? Uh, and do you think the purpose of that was to isolate? Oh, absolutely. Um, my grandmother and grandfather made a surprise visit to our house one day when we were just in his home in Cincinnati right after we got there. Uh, they were missing us and wondering why we were suddenly cut off from them. And that scared him, I think, because of the abuse was already uh, going on in earnest. And um, I think that spooked him. So that was... As I said in my book, that was a loose end that he needed to tie up. So we were on the run after that. Didn't your grandparents at one point say, these, these are not our boys, something happened to our boys? Yes. We were terrified. They came into the living room and uh, we, were, we were excited. I thought, my first thought was, finally, they came to rescue me. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that they would. If anybody would, it would have been Grandma Grandpa Wisher, they would have come. But legally, there was nothing they could do. I didn't know that as a four-year-old. but. Um, yeah, they said those exact words. These aren't our boys. Something's happening here. And uh, the, the man put on a sheepish face and said, I don't know what you're talking about. And, but we knew, when we looked in his eyes, we knew you know, we were miles from, from being rescued. And we kept our mouth shut that whole Yeah, that now whole you, uh, it was a very small town. I'm sure it had a sheriff, though. Well, what yes. if you had gone to a sheriff in a very small town and said I'm being abused, would they have done anything? I don't know. Um, that was back in the 70s. I don't know what they would have done. Um, but we were small children. We were terrified to tell anybody, much less the police. Um, we were becoming more and more convinced that there was no help for us. We were going to live our lives with this man and um, you know, keeping him happy was, was the, our norm. How could your mother not notice that you know, she didn't witness what's going on. Mm -hmm. How could she not notice a change in you? You know, I don't know the answer to that. She may have. Um, I know that, you know, there, there comes a point in uh, parents' lives when they, they see it, they, they find out, and they have a choice to make. And uh, I, I've seen it so many times now. The wrong choice gets made. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe because it's she, economics or, or embarrassment. I don't know what the reason. She went is. back to him more than once, didn't she? She did, yes. Yeah. And uh, it troubled us. It oh, did. indeed. Um, 
I like, you know, I don't have time to watch TV. I'm always in the office, but sometimes I'm home and I see Dr. Phil and I kind of like him. And I see these women on and they're having a lot of big problems with their children. And I think, where are the fathers? Mm -hmm. Could you have not picked up the phone and called your dad? I had no idea where he was. I heard a rumor that he was in Florida, but that was, that's all that I had ever. Now he had children. Did he molest his own children? He did, yes. He sure did. Um, we have child abusers kind of categorized. I mean, they, they usually fall into one of a half a dozen categories. Uh, this guy was the worst of the worst. Um, you know, he did not have a preference to male or female, young or old. He didn't have an age preference. Um, and I, I'm absolutely certain we weren't the only victims. I mean, if I go back through my life and find all my friends, I'm sure some of them would tell us that they fell victim as well. So he was, uh, he was a sadistic predator. This went on for 10 years? Yes, 10 years. How did it stop? Uh, the last time my mom left, and I believe it was because um, she had either walked in on something or um, I can't remember what my brother told me. But during that trip away, um, we saw my grandparents and they decided no more fleeing into the darkness with you. They contacted my dad and he was in Florida. And uh, he drove through the night, came up to, to visit with us. We didn't tell anybody at that point what was going on, but we knew that we had, uh, we were old enough to know we had contacts now that if we wanted to. And it was just a couple of months later that we decided enough, let's start telling people. So we, we called dad up and told him and made a couple of phone calls and that's when it all started to end. Did you ever call the authorities? I did, I actually did. What'd they do? Um, well, they did what they could with what we gave them. Again, we were just kids. But when, uh, when we were making the call that night to the authorities, my mother found out and she panicked. She didn't know what to do. And as I said, uh, probably one of the worst decisions she ever made in her life, and she called the man and told him that we had made the phone call. So he came rushing home from his poker game that he was at. Um, and I thought that you know it, we were really going to get killed or something bad was going to happen that night. And I, I saw a different side of him for the first time. He was, at, he was scared. He was afraid of me for the first time. That must have and, been some sense of satisfaction. Maybe it was fleeting. Well, I, I, was, uh, I was shocked. I was too shocked to really mm -hmm. enjoy the moment. But um, I just remember the, the, the terror on his face talking to me. And, uh, and how old were you? I was around 14 at mm -hmm. that time, yeah. And he said, well, you know, what is it that you want? And I said, well, you know what we want. We want to leave. We want to get out of here. Uh, and I want to take my brother with me. That's all I could think to say at the time. I should have taken everybody with me, but mm -hmm. as I'm still a kid. Well, I, you're still a kid, yeah, yes. I just grab one of my brothers and run. So uh, he said, well, all you had to do was tell me. I'll buy you a ticket tomorrow. And he was a liar my whole life. So I knew he was just grasping and for uh, some sort of salvation here. And, but I didn't know who to trust. I mean, it was all on me at that moment. Everybody I, had let you down, right? Everybody had let me down. And I did not know who to trust. Uh, Yes, there was supposedly someone coming from a law enforcement agency the following day. I don't know who this person is, what they're going to do. Are they going to make it worse for me? Are they going to be able to help me? Uh, is he lying or is he actually going to buy me a ticket tomorrow? Mm -hmm. uh, and all of this was on me. I had to, I had to uh, wrestle with this and reconcile it right then on the spot. No time to think about it. Um, so I decided, you know what? You buy me a ticket tomorrow and I'll tell everybody to go away. So that's, uh, that's what we did. And he, he did. He came through. He bought the tickets and we, we flew to Florida. You have, I think, mentioned in your book that he, his face w could turn evil. Oh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's like a. He, was, uh, he wasn't a drug addict. He wasn't an alcoholic. He was stone sober and just evil. Evil. And just an angry man. And to a child, that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before. Before I uh, leave the audience hanging, uh, he's not living now, right? No, he's not. He was uh, he was a victim of a homicide. Um, oh, really? Just a couple of years ago, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now, before the program, I told you I'm surprised that you've got a good marriage. Mm -hmm. You have a child. I do. That's very exceptional because usually abused children really don't get relationships right. 
Yeah, they, you're right. They can't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am the exception to the rule. I am. Uh, none of my siblings really have fully recovered from those years. There's uh, some level of dysfunction in all of them, and probably in me as well. Um, but I decided uh, about 20 years ago, I'm going to take my stand next to Jesus. And if anybody can walk me out of these woods, it's going to be him. Wow. And it took, it took some time because there was just suitcases full of dysfunction that come along with all of that mess. Um, but uh, I, never, I never walked away from his side. Um, and he was the one that opens the cage and, and gets you out. Did um, you had a grandmother who put some of the Word of God in you at a very young age? I did. Was that kind of... That was the uh, very foundation that I stood on forever was... Um, it's amazing. Yeah. Hey, okay, grandparents, I'm always trying to drop these things in my grandkids, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, at one point they will remember. Now, in case you just joined us, uh, my guest is Detective uh, James Wisher, and he is the head of Crimes Against Children Department. If I could just make a small correction, sure. I'm not the head of that department. My colleagues will hear you say that. Oh, hang okay. When I get back, I'm just one of the detectives, one of seven detectives. And then there's a command staff okay, over us. Okay, I, I got the impression that's, that, no, that's okay. uh, well, I just nominated I wish I was ahead of it. <laughs> I nominated you for that. Um, that what, what a wonderful department. Now, how, how do you go about this? I don't know anybody more qualified to really kind of just, uh, just sniff out the, the truth, which is what you have to have. Because is there a small percentage of really savvy little smart kids who can accuse a totally innocent adult and ruin their life. Yeah. We're very uh, discreet when we come into these investigations. Um, I, we have to know that we have a, a real suspect before we start making any real waves. J for that reason, we don't want any, we don't even want the appearance of an accusation to get out if nobody did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we do have some uh, people that make these, these kinds of accusations. But uh, usually when they're, especially the younger kids, it's not fiction. Um, usually they, they, don't, they can't come up with the subject matter and an attack on an adult and, and then remain consistent and things like that. So usually when we're hearing from the small kids, we know something's up and uh, the investigation is on at that point. Um, the, you got me almost speechless with this whole story, but the, uh, the stories they tell, there's, there's a real consistency, isn't there? There's just certain information in every yeah. single one of them? We're, we're very careful with children. Um, it's very difficult, if not impossible, for small children to hold on to a fiction. Mm -hmm. If someone has put it in their head to blame someone or right. to accuse someone. And so that's, if it's made up, we can, we, we speak to them as law enforcement officers or other professional counselors who speak to them. And those lies get torn apart in a hot minute. But when it just remains consistent, it's usually because it's not a fiction. It's I don't know who could be more qualified for you to, to figure it out. And now, if, if you figure out if a little child's telling the truth, uh, you're pretty solid on that. Uh, when you bring the guy in, are you, are you just as sharp to know he's, he's lying through his teeth? Yeah, well, I am uh, a little bit more qualified because I lived with a predator. Yeah. And I know how they hide and I know the things that they say. We've also had just hundreds of hours of uh, FDLE training and other kinds of training to uh, interview people, and it becomes a little almost second nature when you're talking to people that even people that aren't suspects, you just know when they're they're not being honest with you, and so yeah, that that's very helpful as well when we're talking mm -hmm. to them. I want to talk about uh, just an encounter you had with the Lord, because as we talked about earlier, you're really an exception um, with the good marriage and and how, how you view your child. When you look at your child, you must think, how could anybody oh, yeah. do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's a little too spoiled oh. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, well, we'll forgive that. But uh, you went to a meeting, and maybe some of my viewers will actually know the speaker was uh, Betty Baxter. I heard her when I was a teenager, I yeah. think. So it's um, been quite some time ago. But there apparently was the power of the Lord there that touched sure you. Because in this book, you said a child begins to lose his soul. Mm -hmm. what, what a statement. And it's like God began to replenish what had been taken from you. Yeah. 
my, my insides had iced over for a number of years. I'd even become a bit rebellious in my late teens uh, against him primarily. And um, my mother, we were all beginning to be removed from that horrible part of the past. My mother was recovering spiritually. She was very sorry about all that. She was growing up herself and um, we were finding our way f to forgive her. But she was constantly asking me to go back to church. And I had had enough. Mm -hmm. I had been to enough church. But I told her just uh, as a uh, kind of a, a deal, if you'll leave, if you, I'll go with you this Sunday and listen to whoever this guest speaker is if you won't ask me anymore. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, the ice began to melt. I think Jesus met me right there and was that is such me a, home. That is such a great way to put it. And also, so many of these situations are a step parent or a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. When are women going to, you know, learn how to figure out and really analyze someone before they get involved with them? I don't know when they're going to do it, but I begged them in, uh, in my book, get to know the person that you're inviting into your own. Ask the hard questions. Do not throw your children to the wolf. You will not get them back. Uh, if you do, they will not be the same. Let me remind you, friends, this book is on Amazon.com, The Boy Who Never Cried Wolf. If I've ever in my life seen the redemptive power of the Lord, of, uh, Lord above and how he can take the very worst thing, I don't know of anything worse than this, Jim, and turn it around and make good out of it because right now you are in the business of rescuing these children and you've got the knowledge, you've got the experience, yep. and you've got the power of God, and it is one great combination. Thank you so much. Hope you can come back You're sometime. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And I hope that uh, you have gleaned some information of this, and I hope you'll be thinking about really important things. Uh, keep your eyes out, eyes wide open for children that you might think are just it's not quite right. Be very aware of what's around you. We are out of time, so join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.